woken up. I'm at a retreat right now. I'm at a fasting detox. It's gonna last for seven days. And I actually arrived yesterday. I didn't film much of it because I really wanted to get settled into this new place. But I've woken up this morning after the deepest sleep and my room just backs up into this rainforest. So excited for the week ahead. I'm gonna explain to you everything that's going on. Let me just quickly explain to you everything that's going on. Because if you're new here, you've got a lot to catch up on. Here's a little story of how my family and I turned sailboats into our home for the past nine years. Meet Captain Riley, my lover, and our two stowaways. I'm Elena. When I crossed paths with Riley in Greece, who was navigating solo all those years ago, little did I know our lives would intertwine. Within only weeks of knowing each other, he asked me to sail around the world with him. And of course, I had to say yes. Riley didn't know how to sail when he bought La Vagabond the first, but with his determination and my minimal experience sailing tiny 10-foot sailboats in high school, we've come so far. It is a miracle though. Through sharing our adventures in these videos, we've managed to turn our passion into our livelihood. So join us for a special land-based video this week and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss our upcoming sailing season in Malaysia, the Philippines and Japan. So I recently left the boys, the boys being Lenny and Darwin, my two kids, they're two and five, and um, the other boy, the big boy, <laughs> Riley, my partner. I, I got this opportunity to come out to a retreat so the boat just had the new engine put in and she's ready to go. We're so excited to sail up to the Philippines from Malaysia. Um, but I'm also really happy that we had some weeks off because I get to do this total mind body reset. Don't worry, I'm not gonna get all woo woo on you. I, we actually have Riley here. This is gonna be a really fun video because he's gonna play devil's advocate. He is coming around to the whole fasting thing because there's so much more data and studies being done, um, but he is gonna satisfy all the skeptics out there. So do stick around. I'm gonna get a little bit woo-woo, I'm not gonna lie. A little bit about my inspiration for fasting. So Dr. David Sinclair is the leader in longevity research at Harvard, who I've been obsessed with since reading his book in 2019, Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. Definitely read it. He highlights fasting as a key to a longer, healthier life. His whole philosophy on considering aging as a treatable disease is basically the advice I've chosen to follow and what I try to live by. He studies how fasting triggers our body's survival circuits, enhancing proteins like sirtuins that control aging, improving cellular repair and strengthening our stress response. This process, known as hormesis, suggests that the right kind of stress, like fasting, can actually benefit our health. Dr. Sinclair's work reveals fasting's role in activating critical pathways such as sirtuins, AMPK and mTOR, which drive DNA repair and improve mitochondrial function, underscoring caloric restriction's potential to extend life. His insights are shared in his book I already told you about and is further detailed in academic journals and Harvard's lab. He's really paving the way for our understanding of ageing. Research supports fasting's diverse benefits from weight loss and metabolic improvements to enhance cardiovascular health and brain protection. Yet, of course, individual responses can vary, highlighting the need for more research to fully harness fasting's power for longevity. So my boy David's findings remind us that while genetics play a role in ageing, lifestyle choices have a significant impact, offering a powerful message. How we live influences how long and well we live. We have such a fun week planned, apart from the not eating part. <laughs> we are not going to be eating food for seven days and we're just taking um, some high potency supplements, also doing enemas every day. So yesterday um, we got the rundown on the whole retreat place and um, what we'll be doing this week. So I wanted to learn that before I told you guys. The taxi drive here was actually a bit of a lull. I'm up in the mountains right now. The taxi driver saw my guitar, I brought my guitar out here because I thought I'd have lots of time for playing. But he saw my guitar and was like, oh, miss, you must play guitar for me. <laughs> I was sitting in the back seat playing guitar and he was going up these mountains and sometimes he'd tell me to stop because it was he'd have to like floor it and he didn't want me to like hurt myself anyway and um, I'm really excited because midweek 
all the boys are gonna come visit me here. They're gonna stay at a place nearby and I'll get to see them. Seven days is a long time to be away, but I'm here. I have arrived. I'm going to try and relax. And let me tell you something true. I mean, it's all been true, but something really true. I think I'm mostly here because I physically feel so healthy and mentally as well. I feel like now is an opportunity to maybe go a little bit deeper and go to the next level spiritually because I am feeling already so healthy and happy. This wasn't always my reality though. Early last year, I hit a wall of burnout that completely shook me. An inside tracker test revealed my biological age to be 10 years older than my actual age. It was a wake up call. I made a conscious decision to prioritize self-care by working less, improving my diet, hitting the weights, and truly focusing on my health. While I plan to undergo another test later this year, for now, I kind of feel like I've shed a decade off my age. It's a tremendous relief and I'm filled with gratitude for the transformation. And for Kate and Pat, friends and owners of Natural Instinct Healing, for having me this week. You'll hear a little more from them later. So yeah, although I don't really feel like I need this detox retreat right now, I'm certainly not complaining and I do believe in maintenance rather than cure. Well, we've been running these retreats for about 12 years now. 12 plus years, yeah. I think my favourite thing is just really getting to share my healing work and getting to sit with people and listen to their stories, you know, really learn about, about them and why they do what they do and their behaviours and habits and yeah just getting to share share a part of their life. I think for me it's like this just bringing together like you know a dozen or 15 random people and putting them into a human experiment where they're going through this process together yeah. and then they're just like moving and morphing through that process but just like the human experience of people coming together. I'm really excited to see what this week looks like. This is the goodie bag they gave us. Let's have a look what's in here. I already know what's in here, but I'll show all of you guys. We've got a daily supplement schedule. Every hour and a half, we take something, whether that's the detox shake. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> and so you want to drink it quite quickly because it does solidify. So what's at the bottom is clay, right? Yeah, so bentonite clay. So this is what's going to draw all the toxins from your bloodstream into your GI tract. Yeah, and then the psyllium is fibre, so it's going to kind of sweep everything through. It's kind of like a broom. And then when we have the enemas, we're excreting everything out. Sandy, for that pineapple, you can tell it's a good pineapple. Or the intense herbs, which are very strong. And then dinner time is this vegetable broth, which is like the highlight of the day. It's so good. It's, there's no fibre in it, so it's really just water, but like organic vegetables that have been cooked over hours. And this is the schedule. So we're going to be having some fun trips to this beautiful sauna ice bath centre. I've actually, I've done this retreat before. It's like, it's magical. There's massages, we've got a nutrition workshop, a emotional stress workshop, uh, a bunch of workshops, which I really love, and obviously meditation and yoga, and then just a checklist, which isn't compulsory. Actually, I mean, yeah, none of it's compulsory. They do recommend you do the enema, dry skin brushing. I actually did that last night. You do that before you have a shower, just so you remember to do it. It's so nice. I thought it was like a sea sponge, but it's part of a root from a plant. Parasite zapping, we also plug into this really low volt thing. Uh, it actually zaps and kills unwanted things that are living inside your body. The parasite zapper. You're probably wondering what the hell is going on here. I am playing devil's advocate. You see what we've done here? I'm gonna be presenting the other side of the argument and I'd like to start at the most easy to refute, which is going to be the parasite zapper. A small amount of research into the parasite zapper will lead you to a Dr. Hulder Clark, who invented the parazapper and made a series of bold claims, including but not limited to, it could cure cancer, 
and AIDS. The idea is that all cancer springs forth from one parasite in the body, an intestinal parasite called Fasciolopsis buscae, which reminds me of something from Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So you might be asking yourself, what is the parasite zapper? It consists of two copper handles attached to a small black box containing a nine volt battery. The patient holds the handles, the box is switched on, and the parasites are zapped away. So when legally challenged in the US, Dr. Hulda Clark, bailed to Tijuana, became quite rich selling her services. She sold a couple of million books. And then, and I need to be careful how I deliver this, she eventually died of multiple myeloma, which is a cancer affecting the liver, bones, and kidneys. Sunshine, 10 minutes breathing awareness, swim in the pool, I'm going to be doing that got a water bottle. These are the detox herbs which we take how many times a day? I think four times a day. Ten drops of under the tongue I'm pretty sure. A little journal. I'm gonna try and journal. I used to journal before I started making videos. Yeah, that's it. It gets worse. It doesn't get easier. Okay, herb drops are done. Just got changed, I'm gonna go use the infrared sauna and the pool and listen to some music because my energy levels have just really dropped. I thought I was like getting away with it. And on top of that, a little coffee headache has come in. At some point I've got to do an enema. So I'm very familiar with enemas, I've done a bunch in the past now, but um, I forgot like how scary the first one is. It's not as scary as it looks, but the first one for sure. Be careful with the cayenne pepper, apparently. Yeah. I really don't want to bring out the big camera to film any of these events because I don't want to ruin anyone else's experience. Sometimes having a camera around can really take from that, so I've just been filming with my iPhone, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. I feel like day two, I'm really, I'm going deeper. I've switched modes. I'm no longer in like starvation mode or like this is strange. It's, I'm actually detoxing now. I can feel it. I nearly missed your call because Darwin just smashed the glass. Oh no. So uh, that has their fever gone down? All right. Yeah, they'll be fine. They've got, they've got heaps of medicine for diarrhea, cough, and everything. They're fine. Oh, babies. I woke up this morning feeling pretty good, except I think um my kids are both sick, and so. <clears throat> I've woken up this morning with a tiny bit of like something in my lungs which isn't good but I, I can usually fight it off within 24 hours I, it doesn't usually take a hold of me so I'm hoping that's the case now and I've heard that when you fast uh, your body is actually quicker at recovering I'm going to fact check that but I know in a lot of cultures they fast when they're sick and animals do it too naturally hopefully I can fight this off because this morning we're going to the beautiful sauna place and I can't wait for that but yeah, the kids are sick at home, which isn't like a nice feeling. Riley's all over it though. And I'm only an hour away if I have to pop back, but yeah. That was really cool. So it's the new year, you guys. It's always a great time to work on yourself. I was so excited to share today's sponsor with you, which is BetterHelp. We've been using BetterHelp for years now. Um, I absolutely adore my therapist. And she's actually helped me set up some goals for 2024, which I don't usually do. And we're already working on them and achieving them. One of them is just to learn to be more patient. I mean, I have many, but, uh, and another is to not feel so guilty when I give myself time, just time in general. and 
time to do the things that I love, you know, getting in that flow state. So if you wanted to, you could ask your therapist to help you create SMART goals, which are measurable, they're attainable, and they can be time bound. BetterHelp makes starting therapy a lot easier. Myself and a whole bunch of others find it a lot less intimidating than in-office therapy. It's also cheaper than in-office therapy. And yeah, it's so much more comfortable being able to chat to my therapist from my bed or the beach or the boat. And you can do that as a phone call. You can do that via video call or even messaging. Yeah, just whatever's the most comfortable version of therapy for you. So the scheduling flexibility with BetterHelp is what really sold us. You're able to book and reschedule if you need to, super easy. And to get started, you just answer a simple questionnaire. It doesn't take any time at all. And then you'll be connected with a licensed therapist matched specifically to your needs. And that's within 48 hours or less. And if you're not vibing with the first or the second or third therapist you get, that's totally fine. With a click of a button, you can just change therapists at no additional cost. So if you'd like to join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp and make 2024 look great for you, I'm going to pop the link in the description box below. It's betterhelp.com forward slash sailing and you'll actually get 10% off your first month. Thanks guys, do take advantage. Where are you from? Australia. Yeah. So beautiful, look at the flowing river. I'm just about to do a sauna ice punch round. And I decided to warm up in the sauna first because cold water immersion and I have a love-hate relationship. Many of you might remember a couple of years ago when we all got Viking haircuts, went up to the Arctic Circle, and I was nominated to follow Norwegian tradition. Anyway, since then, if our travels have brought us near an ice bath, I'll always try to get my daily fix. The health benefits of being in cold water around or less than 15 degrees Celsius for 5 to 15 minutes can help improve circulation, provide stress relief, enhanced immune function, increases alertness and energy, and most noticeable to me is a huge boost in positive mood. But God, I still hate it in the moment. The steam sauna and ice plunge was so nice. Just being there and next to that river with all the stone carvings, it really feels like Bali. It feels so magic. And I'm feeling super refreshed. I just came home, we got a coconut, which is like not the highlight of my day. The highlight is the broth for sure, but the coconut's so nice. And it was really hard walking past all the lovely cafes outside of this retreat center oh there was this one place that had um like all organic clean like brownies and cheesecakes and chocolate oh my god i've got to get it out of my brain right now before some signals get sent around the body oh god i'm just kidding i'm delusional i'm just about to sit down and do some work and now's a good time to use the bug zapper, the parasite zapper, because you can't drink anything or cross hands over because it can disturb the current. So I'm gonna be <clears throat> like this. I'm about to go to sleep, you guys. This afternoon we did an emotional stress workshop with Kate and it was so good just learning about how the body reacts to certain situations and how you process that. And just observing your emotions. I actually read the book, uh, Is It The Power Of Now? It was so long ago, like 10 years ago, but just learning to separate your emotions from your you is so powerful. And just, yeah, treating it as like an energy that's going through your body. I'm feeling incredibly tired and weak at the end of day three. So let's see how tomorrow is. I'm definitely feeling like more open and slow and sensitive it's good it's a good feeling
Mama's right here. Hi. Hey, make sure Dada brushes your teeth. Hey, who wants to be? burst of energy this morning and I just really need to mix up the scenery so I'm going to one of my favorite places here in a wood. Because the boys were sick I did keep my communications on for most of this fasting journey and to film of course. I was going to film this Pilates class for you guys actually but we were all told to switch off our tech so I only managed to catch this warm-up. A blessing in disguise really. I was then able to fully check in and connect to my body on a deeper level. Afterwards, I sat and watched people do partner acrobatics, which reminded me a lot of my gymnastics days. I really want to try this with Riley back on the boat, but I think he might take some convincing. It's nearly the end of day four. I just got home from my Pilates class. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit of a space cadet today. It's really hard for me to pull it all together. But uh, the Pilates class was really, it wasn't too hard, which was nice. I actually told the instructor, just like, go easy on me. If you see me not working so hard, it's because I'm, <laughs> I'm juice cleansing. But I forgot to mention that last night I actually had some wild dreams. No one likes hearing about other people's dreams anyway, I'll spare you. But I've completely lost my filter and I'm just saying whatever I want. <laughs> I'd do that anyway, but now it's like next level. So I've just really, I feel like without all the caffeine that's in my system and food and even just a detox from technology, I'm um, just more raw. It feels nice. It's a beautiful feeling. What about scientific studies though? Between Sinclair's research, resources like PubMed and clinicaltrials.gov, which offer a wealth of ongoing and published studies, I'm thrilled to say that I really think that there's enough science out there now, let me know what you think about that in the comments, that proves that with appropriate medical supervision, the pros outweigh the very little cons to fasting. We were so lucky to be on our way to take part in a water purification ceremony with a local this morning at his family's temple. Water purification ceremonies are an integral part of Balinese Hindu culture. These ceremonies hold great spiritual significance and are performed to cleanse the body, mind and soul of impurities, both physical and spiritual. The rituals are performed for various reasons, including to mark significant life events such as childbirth, marriage or death, to seek spiritual renewal and healing, or to appease spirits and seek protection from negative energies. The ceremonies are regarded as essential for maintaining harmony and balance between the physical and spiritual realms. So we just got back. This morning we scurried off to get to this beautiful temple to do a water blessing, a traditional blessing. And basically the idea is to shake off any negative energy or anything you don't want and you're meant to set an intention as well. And yeah, you stamp your feet and um, Made, who actually was on the first retreat I ever did, did here in Bali. He's yeah, a very beautiful man and he was singing and oh, it's, it's really nice. So I'm feeling clean is the only way <laughs> to describe how I feel right now. Refreshed maybe. And I'm so excited because Riley and the kids are on their way to a board. They're gonna stay the night. It's gonna be so special. Yeah, can't wait to see them. Very good. How are you? Long time no see. Yeah, mate. <laughs> We've already had our reunion, but um, this is the first time we haven't seen Riley as Devil's Advocate. Hang on, my screen is a bit dirty. <coughs> How are you, baby? Good. Yeah. It's just getting a little bit hot again. Darwin, did you miss mum? Yeah. Did you? And you gave me a robot. I did. And what else? You give me a cake and a ball. Yeah. A secret ball. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been up to? You know, what just starving myself for five days. It was Has so it been five days? Yeah, it's day five. Have oh, you been away for four though? 
Uh, yeah, I fasted on the first day, and I left yeah. you guys on that same day, yeah. How did it turn so, into a cow? Yana no, Nikita Karusu. Yes. You've just done a water blessing. I did, and I did a, actually I did a healing session. Did you bless the water, or did the water no. bless you? <laughs> Okay, anyway, did that lovely healing session with Claire today and actually like talked about my dad and my nana and my births, which was really beautiful and healing. Like about Lenny's birth, which I realized I probably haven't like processed properly. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. Anyway, nice to have you back. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> I don't, this is not going to turn into a car, I tell you. This is the most difficult toy we've ever bought. Darwin, sorry, but we lack the skills necessary to turn Bumblebee into a car. Aww. So, what's for lunch, babe? Clay. <laughs> <laughs> just being with the family again has really made me just want to eat something there was food in their room like you rice the boys cake I know that I was easy and then that. I got in the room and there was chicken and rice and I was like I feel like just eating something right now but I'm not going to cave it's day five I've got tomorrow to do and then the next day I break the fast and show us this horrible concoction you've got here it's actually not that bad but if you leave the fiber in there too long it'll, it absorbs all the water and you cannot drink it yeah good grief Delicious. Bottoms up, hey? There's so much good food in a bud too. Like, if you do a fast here, make sure you give yourself extra time afterwards to enjoy all the food or before. It's so much good stuff. What are you craving? What do you What do you want when you get home? Honestly, I just want like a big Buddha ball with tempeh and tofu, and no, come on. No, I, I'm not kidding. I do. What about a pizza? No, I looked at a pizza today. I did not want to put that in my body. It's well known that fasting helps reduce any cravings for unhealthy food you might have, and on average, it stays that way for a long time afterwards. Anyway, I headed back to my room that night because I thought that sleeping in the boys' hotel room, which I'd originally planned, might be a bit much for me. I was so exhausted and needed a good sleep. Plus, I couldn't bear to watch them all eat dinner. Another reason why doing a medically assisted fast like I've done, away from the real world and all temptations, is a much more comfortable, achievable, and of course, safer option. I'm very, very dead. The boys have left me now, but it was so nice seeing them. It gave me new life, really. Apart from last night, I was totally dead. I couldn't even sleep with all of them because I feared if I got woken up by the kids, which would happen. I don't know what would have happened to me today because I was just, I could barely, I could barely walk up the stairs yesterday evening. It's the first time I felt that uh, low, with no energy at all. But uh, today I'm full of life. I had a great morning with the kids and Riley. Yeah, guys, you can take my shoe in. Yeah, look how strong you are. And yeah, guys, you can take my shoe in. Lenny hasn't been eating much lately. No, he hasn't. Neither have I. <laughs> Him and I both. Sympathetic starvation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all alone again. I'm about to do a, a workshop with Kate, a self-care workshop. And then tomorrow's the last full day, and then the next day we break our fast. So I've nearly done it. I'm feeling pretty good, considering all things. As you might already know, or could probably guess, there's a variety of different fasting methods, ranging from prolonged fasting, like what we're doing here, intermittent fasting, alternate day fasting, water fasting, juice fasting, and that's just to name a few. But what's interesting is that they share several common benefits that stem from the physiological and metabolic changes that occur when the body shifts from using glucose as its primary fuel source to breaking down fat for energy, a process known as ketosis. So on to the second thing that I wanted to talk about, which is the actual fasting. Um, and I've done a little bit of research here. I've got some stuff from Healthline, Harvard Health, and the National Institute of Health. And honestly, it's all kind of bullshit. Vague recommendations, mild warnings. Like, if you, if you fast, then you might eat more when you're not fasting, which is advice for children. Like, I think, I think that Lenny would honestly be beyond that. 
So I was pretty disappointed with what I found there. Elena is referring to some studies that have been done. I haven't found any, so I'm gonna to defer to some anecdotal evidence. So for me personally, I did intermittent fasting for 18 months, seriously, and I found it quite easy because I'd been, I don't have breakfast. Um, or I, I was never hungry at breakfast time. But I gave up the, the consciously attempting to do the fasting part of it uh, for the same reasons that Peter Adia, who is a heart surgeon, he has The Drive podcast and he's author of the book, The Science of Longevity, or The Science and the Art of Longevity, I think it's called. So I heard him recently talk about um, body composition and a loss of fat, but also muscle which in the end, because of the loss of muscle, means that the amount of fat making up the total percentage of your body is higher, which in the end is less healthy. And that's exactly what I found. So when I heard him say that, I was like, ah, oh, that's exactly why I gave up. I actually do think that it's good in spurts for nearly everyone because it makes you more in tune with your body, which I really think is key. And you realize just because it's 7.30 a.m. doesn't mean I need two pieces of Vegemite toast and a, and a double shot oat milk latte. You're just more in tune and you understand when you're actually hungry and when you think you're hungry, it's an important distinction. Today was all about liver flushing. My friend from the retreat and I went on a little shopping mission and downed some of the specific herbs along the way in preparation. We all know that the liver is a natural detoxifier, but what about cleaning the thing that cleans us? So this procedure supposedly helps purge the liver of toxins and promotes its health and function. The general idea is to stimulate the liver to get rid of waste and gallstones, improve bile flow, and support overall liver longevity. Last time I did a liver flush, I passed three gallbladder stones, which is super common for people to do, and yeah, I guess they just look like green peas. I was expecting something similar to happen by tomorrow once the flush was complete. Thank you for that beautiful session, Kate. Oh, my pleasure, darling. <laughs> Thank you. I've been laying down here. We've been getting up to all it's sorts, haven't right. we? <laughs> We've been finding moons and rainbows. We have. We have. There's been feathers and all kinds of things. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure, beautiful. Oh. That is so sour. And oily. Oh. Okay. Now I've got to lay on my right side for 30 minutes so it goes down into my liver. It's day seven today. This morning I woke up, went for a big walk, took some photos on my film camera and um, some B-roll on this camera and came back. We did a workshop just uh, learning what to do after we've broken the fast, which is tomorrow. Today's the last day. Tomorrow we get to eat food again. We're going to break our fast with some papaya and coconut, not coconut cashew yogurt uh, yeah so I'm so excited I've nearly done it I had a lot of energy today surprisingly like yeah wow I had a one-on-one -on -one session with Kate which was so beautiful came back and we had a beautiful beautiful fire ceremony with Made we wrote down on a piece of paper all the things we want to get rid of so I burned all of that all my sins can't wait to pack up tomorrow and go see the boys. I'm so excited. I can't wait. This has been such a nice time, a reset I didn't even know I needed. I've just packed up my room, sent the boys a little voice message. Yeah, about to break fast. I can't believe I've done it. I feel so refreshed i feel like a newborn baby my body feels so healthy i feel calm i feel i feel all the things right now i really i could even go another day to be honest i don't want to ruin this pureness within me <laughs> and two more things i love here on the retreat they make you write a letter to yourself and they post it to you at some point in time it's usually about a year and the ones I have received in the past that I've written to myself just could not have come at a better time. So I wrote this letter this morning and 
No green peas. I didn't see any green peas this morning, but I wasn't really looking, to be honest. Last night wasn't super uncomfortable at all. When I went to bed, I felt quite nauseous, but nothing in the night. I didn't get woken up from 12 till 3 when your liver's most active. Uh, so yeah, done, done. Ah! We broke our fast with papaya and cashew yogurt for the digestive enzymes and probiotics. We'd have to slowly reintroduce the different food groups over the coming week. Some religions might practice fasting for a few hours or even a few weeks, like Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. And some other groups approach fasting with the philosophy of breaking their fast with meat, which I thought was pretty interesting. Kind of like a caveman would, I guess. In a way, that kind of makes sense. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the weight loss industry. The global weight loss industry was valued in 2021 at $224 billion. And I sort of feel like some of the skepticism harbored in general towards vaccines and big pharma could be utilized when thinking about, yeah, like I'd call it big wellness and the gigantic and booming um, health and wellness industry. I think that some people here could benefit from applying it there, if you understand what I'm saying. It's sort of the same sort of people, um, in my humble opinion. So yeah, thank you for listening to Devil's Advocate. Thank you for listening to uh, Devil's Advocate. So thank you for listening to the Devil's Advocate. I am sweating. I split my pants open doing all of that stuff and my balls are hanging out. Thanks for being here. I hope you learned something and I'd love to learn from all of you out there too. If any of you like to fast, tell me about some of your experiences in the comments below. For me, each time I fast, I heal just that little bit more, both physically and mentally. And although it wasn't about weight loss at all for me, I did lose three kilos for those of you who are super curious. Anyway, I wanted to end this episode with the lovely Pat and Kate, who hopefully you could come and visit someday. I'll put their details in the description box below as well. I think um, the collective outcome, I would say it's there's a lightness, right? There's a lightness to people. Yeah, there's a big letting go. And yeah. Then, as a result of that, you've just got like this raised vibration of everyone that's come through the experience. They're lighter in their body. They're literally, like they're just... They're lighter in their being, they're lighter in their mind. They've got this clarity and this amazing creativity and it's like all the lights get turned back on. And just the load that they're carrying, the toxic load, whether that's physical toxins in the body or self-limiting beliefs or psychic debris that's kind of connected to their past, whatever it is, and, and to release that and just to see the lightness. It's like, so, for me, someone just switches the light back on and they literally shine like everyone's broken their fast here today and everyone's shining their <laughs> eyes are so clear and their hearts are open and the sun's out and yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful process <laughs>